Hello everybody. Let's continue the CodeZ's course with ladder logic instructions. In this video, the three categories of instructions in ladder programming will be explained. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Well, like the previous videos, a standard project has been created. On the right side, ladder instructions can be seen. Now, let's start with the last category. Ladder elements. The first item is network. As you know, each part of a program has to be written on a network. Well, these bit instructions related to contacts and coils, and also timer and counter instructions were explained during the previous videos. Now, let's see how a move instruction works. Its first input is used to enable it. After that, it copies the specified value at its input, to the destination variable on the right side. Note that, if you define a new variable as the destination variable, based on the input data type, automatically a suitable data type will be selected. Now, the input is a real number with a fractional part. As you see, the selected data type is L real. It's an abbreviation of large real numbers. Because the entered number is small, I can use real format too. Now, let's use another data format. For example, Let's select int, which is used to store integer numbers. So, this data type cannot store real numbers with their fractional part. As you see, this red line represents here is a problem. Now, let's download the program. Well, this message says, there are compile errors, do you want to log in without download? Let's return and solve the problem. I have to change the B variable data type to real numbers, or use an integer number as the input of the move instruction. Now, the input number and the data type of the B variable are the same. In consequence, there is not any error, and it can be downloaded to test the move instruction. Now if I enable this contact, the number 56 will be moved to variable B. Now, let's log out, and see how the next instruction works. Its name is jump. As the name implies, it makes a jump in the program execution. To see its effect, let me extend the program a little. Well, the jump instruction directs the execution of the program to another network. Now, let me add a label to the last network, and then select it as the jump destination. Now, let's test the program, to see the performance of the jump instruction. Well, the jump instruction is not activated, so, these two networks are executing and if I change the state of these contacts, their connected coil will be enabled. Now, let's enable the jump instruction, which directs the execution of the program to the third network. Therefore, the second network is not executing, and this contact is not able to turn on this coil. Alright, let's learn another instruction. Its name is return. Let me change my program a little and then use the return instruction. Now, let's test the program.
as you see, only the first coil has been enabled. Because, when a return instruction is enabled inside a program organization like the current one, or inside a function or function block, the remaining program, after the enabled return instruction won't be executed. Alright, the last two tools, inside the ladder elements category, add branches to the program. Now, let me change the program a little, and then use them. As you see, when a branch is selected, valid locations will be indicated automatically. Let me add it between these two contacts. Now I can write a program and finally end it with a coil instruction. Ok, let me use the undo icon, and then use the last ladder element. Branch with start and end. Similarly, when it is selected, valid locations are specified automatically. After selecting a location as the start point of the branch, valid locations as the end point of the branch, will be indicated. Well, let me add another branch. Alright, let's continue to learn the function blocks category. The first two functions are used to detect rising and falling edges. If you remember, during the previous video, positive and negative contacts were used to detect rising and falling edges on the receiving signals from some sensors. Again, let me change my program a little to use negative contacts and its similar instruction, falling trigger. Well, this is a positive contact to detect rising edge. Let's test its negative type. This program can detect falling edges on the state of the C variable. In other word, if it is enabled, and the state of the C variable changes from 1 to 0, this contact will produce one pulse. Now, let's write its equivalent program with the falling trigger instruction. Similarly, the falling trigger instruction, detects negative changing at its first input. For now, it only depends on the C variable. So, the performance of these two program are the same. Note that, the produced pulse will turn on these variables only during one scan cycle time of the program execution. For this simple program, it's about 1 or 2 milliseconds, which is a very short time. So. Instead of simple coils, usually set and reset coils are used after these instructions. Note that, this contact must be activated, and also, the falling trigger instruction works based on its input state, not only based on its previous contact. Now, let me use another contact, and then test the program. As you can see, I can not use only the C variable to turn on the output coils. Based on the program, I must enable the first contact. After that, if the state of the C variable changes from 1 to 0, the program will active these variables, by using two set coils. Alright, the next two instructions are SR, and RS. Although, the RS has been used during the previous video, now, let me use them beside together to compare their performances. As you see, the data type of the selected variable for the first one, is RS. But for the other one, will be SR. Note that, 
these instructions have two inputs to set and reset their connected coils. So, it's unusual to use set or reset coils at their outputs. Let me change them to simple coils. Again, let's test the program. Well, both instruction have two inputs, to set and reset their outputs. But if both inputs are activated, the RS instruction will reset the output, but the SR instruction will enable its output. This is the main difference between these two instructions. Naturally, if only the reset input is used, both of them will disable their output. All right. The next category is other operators. I'll explain it in the next video. Now, let's continue this video, with the math operators. I've changed my program a little, and now, I want to use an add instruction. As its name implies, it can be used to add some similar numbers together, and store the result on a variable. Note that, if a new variable is used to store the result, automatically, CodeZs will select an appropriate data type for that. Now, the selected data type is uint, which is an abbreviation of unsigned integer numbers. Because it wants to store the result of adding two positive integer numbers. Note that, I can use the input item, to increase the number of inputs of some math operators. Also, instead of constant numbers, stored values on other variables can be used too. Similarly, the next three instruction can be used for subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now, let's use the sub instruction. As you see, the selected data is real. Because, this data type is used for real numbers, and also it can store integer number with their zero fractional part. Another data type that I can use now, is LReal. It's a suitable data type, when we're dealing with a large scale of real numbers. Now, let's use the real data type and test the current program. As you see, when I enable the math operators, they will store the results on the defined variables. Note that, like Boolean variables, I can change stored numbers manually, and then press Ctrl plus F7 on my keyboard. Alright, the next type of math operators are used to compare two values. Let me use one of them. Well, this math operator is called less than. It takes two numbers with the same data type. If it is enabled, and the value specified at the first input is less than the second input, its output will be enabled and can be used to turn on a digital output. All right, let me enable the comparator. Now, the first number, which is determined during the program, is equal to 70, and it's not less than 20. Therefore, the output will remain off. Now, let me change the second number. At this time, the first number is less than 100. So, the comparator instruction has enabled its connected coil. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making. In the next video, 
other basic instructions will be explained. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.